Apologies, I misunderstood. I thought I had to do 20 slides in 20 seconds, so I've got a bit of padding I'm going to need to do. Um, I don't know if, like you, you, um, you might have fallen asleep in front of the telly last night watching the kind of amazing pictures on the news, and I couldn't put this in my, in my slideshow because it only came to me this morning, but a kind of really excellent opportunity. If you'd like to see me afterwards, I thought we could do a pe Pecha Kucha trip to Chile and take, you each get to take 20 students and give them 20 seconds up and down the tube, and we'll, we'll see what happens. Anyway, um, so... What I thought I would do is start with the kind of Hollywood movie helicopter shot of where I'm from. So this is Prudder in Northumberland in the Tyne Valley. Um, that's the Tyne at the bottom. My school, you'll see in a second, up on the right. Prudder is a fairly semi-rural kind of town on the edge of uh, the kind of Newcastle Gateshead conurbation. Students from Prudder either live there all their lives or can't wait to leave. And this is our school, top right. Um, relatively comfortable surroundings but behind those simple and quiet facades something is lurking something perhaps the stuff of nightmares for some of you perhaps the stuff of dreams a robot revolution is taking place um, not quite terminator but um, family learning and family learning if you haven't got involved with it is absolutely transformational what we do is we take bits and pieces and we stick them together and we end up with things which look a bit like this which is I don't even know what it is, but it's a remote control robot. Families get together, families create these, families compete, families work in all sorts of different settings. Here's a country fair, families do it in their schools, and the absolute essence of it is that kind of cooperative, collaborative, competitive environment that some children thrive in, some dads thrive in, but it also brings all sorts of things to the surface. It was a really unique opportunity as a Senate Fellowship just to kind of be able to observe this and to step back from it to train other people to do it. In the process of this, it's tripled, or maybe even quadrupled, maybe even quintupled the number of people that are going to get this opportunity in Northumberland, and hopefully further afield. So that was the first part of something that I was able to do in the Senate Fellowship, and it ends up uh, going in the Future Lab Vision publication. This is Johnny in Tyndale FM Studios. Johnny is in year nine in this picture. You'll see Johnny later. The equipment you see in the studio was loaned by us. I was the training coordinator for Tandale FM. It looked like a brilliant opportunity, a chance to do something different, a chance to kind of voice people's voices, people to be heard in a local community. It just seemed to have everything you could possibly want, but it didn't quite go as planned. Everything fell apart. Everybody fell out with each other. So not everything that you might do when you're facing outwards will achieve what you might hope it would do. And this is just something that you have to deal with. And we've learned a lot from it. Um, I've had to, what's the name, redact, deduct names from this, just to be polite. Um, but you just sometimes have to take these. Creative partnerships was something that we were involved in as a school for quite a while. It led up to lots of things which the Senate Fellowship just gave me a chance to kind of crystallise and look more closely at. Uh, we were actually directed to creative partnerships by a partner that we were working with. Tyneside Cinema in Newcastle said, uh, we tried to make a film with them. They said, well, you probably get more money anyway if you go to creative partnerships than you can from anywhere else. What we were able to do is bring some schools together. We built a TV studio in our school hall about four years ago. Um, so this isn't normally like this. Um, we had students kind of making their own little one shows before the one show existed. And um, from actually one of the schools that's here today, St. Bennett's up in Northumberland, from Astley, everyone got together. The students came up with this idea. This is uh, Sean and Lizzie interviewing Dan. Dan's an architect. You will not see Dan again, but you'll see the results of Dan later in the slideshow. So four years ago, we'd started to do some of these kinds of things by looking out, by reaching at other people to work with. From that situation, we then moved on to a whole variety of other things. We had students working with film. We had students working with media. We had animators. One of our students, on the last day of that week when we built the TV studio, Paul Collard from Creative Partnerships came up. We snuck him into the headmaster's office and interviewed him for about 10 minutes turned it into a kind of creature comfort style video. Uh, Gary has gone on and is now working on feature films. Uh, this was what he did in year 12. You have to go and look at it on YouTube. I wasn't allowed to put videos in. So we now fly back up into the helicopter and have a look down on the school again. And I want you to kind of notice this little cluster of three trees kind of in the middle of the picture here because they're going to reappear in a second. But our school's 50 years old and built on an old open cast mine. So the roots of our school, like the roots of Prudder, are mining. And it's all gone. It's absolutely completely disappeared. Uh, and those are the three trees again. That's Caitlin in a Year 12 textiles project. Um, and like an angel from heaven, we actually secured four million quid of funding. And it's going to land pretty much where Caitlin's sitting. It was a bit of a kind of like Christmas story. I think some of us are worried about Herod and the kind of uh, slaughter of the innocents at the moment. Some of us have suffered as his hands. Uh, so I won't make too much of that. But that's now that same space on our school site uh, dug up. We haven't found the coal yet, but 
um, things are changing. The school site is transformed by us facing outwards, by the people we've talked to. So we are now building on this space, something to recreate some of what we're doing. Some of what you're going to see is what's going to happen. These are the students who helped design the building that's going in there. Johnny again, who was in the radio studio there, second from the left, now in year 11, who's been pretty active throughout the whole process and kind of managed some of the design process. I think they were more excited by the high-vis jackets than the hole in the ground, but um, Izzy decided she do some 80s rave moves, so it gives all sorts of opportunities for expression. That's most of the same group of students at uh, the Victoria Palace in London on the stage of Billy Elliot. Uh, if you haven't been to see Billy Elliot and you don't know what a proper Geordie acting look, sounds like, do go. I would highly recommend it because part of the whole message of that thing was about people ex escaping and responding to the place that they're from. There's mining elements in it, all sorts. So it fitted really well with what we were doing and on stage. That's the building we're going to build. And what that building is, is that building faces outwards. It's designed to face outwards. The shape of the building looks outwards. It almost looks like it's built out of the coal that we're on, but inside it is something shiny and new. It's a TV studio, so the same studio that we tried to build in school, we're now permanently building with the same architect that was interviewed in that studio four years ago, is now in it. So, what's this made me think? <laughs> um, is school this high wire act? I'm sure we all feel like it's a balancing act. I'm sure at the moment we all feel like someone's about to cut the wire. But, is this where our focus should be? Are there students who just don't want to step out onto that wire or who have fallen off so many times? They're going to give up. Should it be such an hour path? Is this not where we should be focusing? Is it not the networks that we create which make this safety net? Is it not all these different people that we're joining hands with? All of those things are the wires that build that net. And this was an image that really came home the more people I heard talking about it, that we are building a safety net so that some students can step out on that wire. They might never even look down. Others won't. And this was another thing. We had our final synod day on the week we all got off when it snowed up north. So, well, it snowed everywhere, but I had this image, you know when the postman walks to your door and you get that one set of footprints in the path? Why is it that you then have to follow those footprints? It's actually a safety instinct. Our schools too often have one set of footprints going in and out, and our students have to. What I would like is that you're encouraging lots of people to make new footprints in the snow so that then there's lots of other ways out, and that's what I think outward facing is about. <laughs>